Hello friends and welcome back. I'm Nick and this is MSFS Flight Plans, an almost perfect blend of aviation and the travel channel and maybe the history channel and maybe Nat Geo too. Why not? For geeks like me who can't get enough of any of those things all smashed in together in one wonderful little spot for us. Today we're going to have a look at Allentown, Pennsylvania since it was one of the updates in the recent Northeast U.S. City update in the sim. And I'll go ahead and tell you guys it looks pretty dang good. Not the absolute best we've seen, but it's close. It's pretty cool. And the only real drawback that I could find out here is a pretty serious performance drag. So if you're using a plane with a lot of glass or it's a complicated plane, then you might want to keep that in mind. I had to turn some of the graphics down even with this bad boy. And as you can see, by popular demand, I decided to haul out the old Tiger Moth for us, which I haven't flown in ages, but it is such a cool plane. And it's also pretty easy on the frame rates, which is going to help out here and just slow enough to give us time to talk about everything we're going to see because there's a lot of stuff jammed in down here. And we do not have any add-ons for this one, by the way. There are some available in this region from FlightSim.to that are free, but they're all old, like two or three year old Google photogrammetry updates. And those things usually don't look that great, and they're usually really, really big files, and they make the performance even worse. But now the sim's taking care of that because they've made it a photogrammetry city, so you don't need those things anyway. So the bottom line is, no add-ons will be included in the video description for this flight. And you guys know on this channel we don't do plane reviews or tutorials, at least not very much, but if you want to see one for this plane, there are plenty of them out there. And if you really want to take your time and do a full walk around, do all your pre-flight checks and all that, you can definitely do it with this thing. But to actually start the engine properly, you have to get out, open the hood, prime it on the engine, then turn the propeller and all that, which is a lot of fun. But for the sake of time, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to flip a few switches in here, and then we'll do the easy start, which is this button right down here. And you know what? While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to, the default setting is a skid on the back, but we are going to land on an asphalt runway, so we'll go ahead and change that. Uh, let's see. Propeller edge, propeller, oil tank. Well, where's the wheel on a skid? There we go. That's what we want is we want wheels. Okay. So that's good. Okay, fuel, that's off. So that's back on. And on this plane, the mixture going backwards is full. So now I've adjusted it. We got full mixture. Crack the throttle a little bit. And the uh, magnetos on this thing are on the outside of the plane. And there's two of them. There's two back here and two up by our passenger. But I've linked them all. So all I'm going to have to do is flip these back here. So let's go ahead and lean out and do that. And if you hit the easy start button, it'll do all this for you, but we might as well flip a few switches while we're down here. There's no flaps on this thing, just some slats out on the front of it. So if you look on the outside on the leading edge, they're down right now. But if you flip this thing, they'll come out and now you can just barely see them up there. So that's all you got to worry about on takeoff and landing. Okay, let's look at the Google map real quick. Then we'll fire this baby up and get on our way. So here we are again in the Northeast United States. And Allentown is kind of made by a triangle between New York and Philadelphia. It's going to be right around this area right there. And there it is. So this is New Jersey over here, New York up there, obviously Delaware down there, Maryland over here where Baltimore is, and then Pennsylvania is all this stuff out here. So we're going to be starting in New Jersey on this side of the Delaware River, and it's roughly in this area right here. I couldn't even find this airport on the Google map, so I'm not sure where it is, but we're somewhere right around here. We're going to take off this way. Come over here, cross over the Delaware into Pennsylvania, come across the Lehigh River into the Lehigh Valley, which is what this whole area is called out here. Then fly down to the north of Bethlehem and then over downtown Allentown. And then we're going to check out, look at this. They got a gigantic amusement park out here. I had no idea this thing was out here, but it looks pretty cool in the sim. So we'll check that out. Then come by, I just noticed there's a town called East Texas. That's interesting. Out here by Albertus because I just noticed this. They've got a ski resort out here, and I hadn't flown down there before, so we'll cruise out there real quick because it's only like two extra miles and see if we get any chairlifts in that one. We kind of got robbed of our chairlifts up there on the Finger Lakes flight, so we'll see if they got any there. And then we're going to come on in here, and this is the airport that we're coming to, the Queen City Municipal Airport. So the whole flight's about 30 miles, but this plane is slow, which is fine with me because we got a lot to see. But the whole trip will probably be 30, 35 minutes in the air. Not too bad. Okay, we don't have parking brakes, so I'm going to flip off my switch for the parking brakes, which will remove the chocks, step on the brakes, and hit the easy start button. Alright, so this little place we're leaving from is called Hartung Airstrip, and I couldn't find any information about it, but it was a good place to start, which is really the only reason why we're out here. And I'm pretty sure the sim got the location of the airstrip wrong. This is where it says we're supposed to be, but I don't think this is where it is. I'll show you where I think it actually is, because there's nothing over here that looks like a runway. And we're even going to have some trees at the end of it that I need to try to clear, so we're going to do all that stuff. Let me check our barrel real quick. All right, you guys ready? Well, let's go ahead and do it. I turned off our passenger up there, too, because his head kind of gets in the way when we're trying to land. Handles pretty easy on the ground, not too bad. Not a lot of flailing around. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to try to thread the needle between those trees right there. And up we go. 
Yeah, you can see they've got some weird looking stuff on the ground out here. But I think this is still part of the photogrammetry area. All right, so I think that grass thing right there is where the runway is supposed to be. You can even see they got some markers on each end of it, but that's not where it was indicated in the sim. So that's probably it. But it was kind of hilly. I did try taking off there before, but it's a really big hill. But at least there's no trees on it. All right, the RPM range for this thing between cruise and climb is only about a 500 RPM spread, so we're just going to pull it back a little bit here and start heading on over to Pennsylvania. This terrain looks beautiful. The fields look great. All the structures on the ground look great. We'll see a few of the trees that look like blobs, but not too many. Not too many at all. All right, this first river we're going to cross over is going to be right down here in this valley out in front of us, and that is the Delaware, which is the border between Pennsylvania and New Jersey down here. So we'll be crossing west into Pennsylvania once we hit it. And that baby is the longest undammed river in the eastern U.S., flowing 282 miles from Hancock, New York, down into Delaware Bay just south of New Jersey. There she is. And other than being undammed, the best damn thing about it is when George Washington crossed it on Christmas Day in 1776 before routing a bunch of Hessian forces in the Battle of Trenton. Anyone who's ever taken U.S. history has probably seen that famous painting of Washington crossing the Delaware. Now this is cool, I didn't see this before because I was taking off to the south, but there was some funny looking stuff down there, so I decided to come this way. Look at that. Those look like multi-families there. What is that thing in the trees? That's weird looking. But what a view they'd have from up here. Look at this. Beautiful. Alright, so over to our right, right down there, you can see the Delaware kind of winding around up there, and it's going to meet up with the Lehigh River, which is what we're going to see next. And this town to our right is called Southeastern, which sits on a little peninsula formed by the Delaware and the Lehigh. So the Lehigh terminates right over there to our right. We can't see where it meets up with the Delaware, as the Delaware flows south from here down to the Atlantic. But as far as the Lehigh River goes, the whole thing is 109 miles long and was owned by a coal company from 1821 to 1966, making it the only privately owned river in the U.S. Well, that looks kind of neat. Done a little strip mining over there. It looks really good. Look at that. All right, so that's the Lehigh up there to our left. And the only dam we're going to see on this flight is officially called the Glendon Dam. It's going to be right up here. It's only 16 feet high, but it looks pretty good. But on every map that I could find, including the Google map, it's called the Chain Dam. So, of course, I had to see what that was all about. This is it right here. Back in the 1800s, the coal company that used to own the river installed a big chain on the other side of it to keep boats from going over the top of the thing. And right down here, which you can barely see, is an old canal, and they got a canal museum, I think that's what this is, that they would take boats across the river here so they could get on the other side of the dam, bring them all the way down to where it hooked up with the Delaware, and then spit them out. And that little thing there is called Chain Bridge Island, and there used to be a bridge going across that that was also made of chains, and there might still be something there. I was trying to look for some pictures of it, but all I could see is where the chains connected to, I guess, the rocks that were holding it down to the ground. So I don't really know what the story was with all that. But there was a lot of chains at one time or another. And that's not the original dam back there. They built that one in 1970 after the original one was crushed by ice flows a couple years earlier. All right, we're going to come check out this wheat field over here to the left because it's one of the best looking wheat fields I've ever seen in the sim. And you can see there's not a lot of farms out here. As you go out west, there's a lot more farms out that way. But this one's just kind of plopped right down here in the middle of everything. And when I first came out here, I figured that must be the farmhouse, but it's not. It's a conference center for St. Luke's Hospital, which is this place right here. So I don't know if the farm or the hospital owns the farm and all this land and maintains it, or if that's owned by somebody else and they just put their conference center out there or what. But check out this field. Houses down there all look fantastic. Really cool. I'm getting a lot more comments from folks that are saying, hey, you should hop out on drone view a lot more often, and I agree. Obviously, views like this look incredible. In fact, that looks amazing. And it's easy enough to do because I have a little trigger that I mapped over to my drone view camera on my stick. And even though it sounds easy to try to fly, navigate, track the notes, and all that stuff, and remember when I want to hop out of the plane is a lot harder than you would probably think. So I'm trying to consciously flip outside in the drone view a little bit more often. Look at that hospital. Looks cool. 
All right, you guys know that I have been looking for an active landfill. We see all kinds of old landfills that have been reclaimed and are covered by grass. Well, we're actually going to have an active landfill up here. This thing on the top of this mountain is the Bethlehem landfill. And on the satellite maps, this side of it was dirt and that side was grass. So I don't know what the difference in the dating was. And this is the river running down through here. So we're going to cross over it again. And on the satellite map, which we'll check out at the end, you can see all kinds of trash and stuff in it. But we won't see a lot of trash in here, but it still looks pretty cool. I think this is as good as we're going to get for an active landfill. So we'll do a little flyby and check it out. All right, altitude's perfect. RPMs look good. Check our barrel one more time. This is our vertical speed indicator here, which I'm guessing might just be a little thing full of liquid that goes up and down as the plane pitches up and down. <laughs> Works well enough. And this thing out here is an airspeed indicator that's powered by the wind. How cool is that? Very cool. That's how cool it is. All right, let's bring our slats back in. We should have done that after we took off, but it said you really just need to bring them in if you're going to do aerobatics, which we're not doing anyway. All right, let's check out this landfill. And once we get over this, we'll be flying over the town of Bethlehem, which straddles the river that runs right through the middle of it. Perhaps most renowned for being the former headquarters of Bethlehem Steel, which existed down here from 1857 through 2003. I think they started liquidating it in the late 90s. All right, before we get to that, let's see what we got in this landfill down here. Maybe there's some trash on this end that I missed. That looks a little bit trashy, although it seems to be in the wrong spot. Maybe they got some trash here. Uh, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Love it. Awesome. This is a power plant right here, which we'll see in just a second as we come around. And this is a huge warehouse complex in the satellite maps. Some of these weren't even done, so that seems to be more updated than some of the satellite maps. But they got like a QVC warehouse, maybe an Amazon, of course. Look at all those trucks out there. Big, big complex. So the town's name, Bethlehem, as you might surmise, has a lot to do with its Christian origins in the mid-1700s, along with several other areas in Lehigh Valley. They've also got towns named Egypt, Emmaus, Jordan Creek, and Nazareth out here. But one thing that's certainly worth mentioning about Bethlehem is that in 1747, it was the first U.S. town to throw up a decorated Christmas tree. So that's cool. All right, so here's the old steelworks now, and these are their old blast furnaces, and as you can imagine, it just decimated the economy out here when they closed this thing down, which caused a lot of other businesses to start leaving because so many people that were working there started leaving, or at least moving out to the outskirts of town. So the city, instead of tearing all this stuff down, decided to keep it up, and they're going to put a casino down there. They've already built a museum, and they're going to throw some hotels and stuff down there, some shopping stuff. they got a performing arts center down there. But I read they're going to keep all this, which is just awesome. And look at these bridges out here. They look great. Really great. Not one of them has all that stuff filled in underneath. Even in some photogrammetry cities, you'll often see that. I mean, that doesn't look perfect, but at least it's not blocky underneath. Look at this thing here. Look at all that rust on there. I think they're calling this steel stacks now, is what they're calling it. And I don't know if they built the casino yet. I think Sands is the one that's going to be building that. Because I couldn't see a marker for the casino, but they've got a lot of other stuff going in down there. Look how filthy that is. Incredible. Absolutely beautiful. And the one bridge that really stuck out to me is this guy, because look how cool that looks. That's called the Hill to Hill Bridge, completed in 1924, that replaced an old two-laned covered bridge. And they've actually got a lot of old covered bridges out here. If you look on the satellite map, I spotted a few, but we're not going to hunt for them in this trip. Look how good that looks. they got an old train bridge out there, a little truss bridge, and a couple trusses here and here. Just beautiful. All right, over here to our right is Lehigh Valley International, which is the main airport out here. And they do have three ILS approaches on that thing in case you feel like having that kind of fun in Allentown. And if you thought D.B. Cooper was the only person to jump from a commercial flight with a whole bunch of money, well, then you've never heard the story of Frederick Hahnman. On May 5th of 1972, that guy boarded an Eastern Airlines flight on a 727 out here at Lehigh with a concealed pistol, which was a lot easier to do way back then. And the plane was en route to Miami via D.C., but by the time they got to Washington, Hahnman was the one calling the shots, demanding $303,000 in cash, parachutes, jumpsuits, some helmets, and two cartons of Benson & Hedges cigarettes. So once they brought him all the loot, he let the passengers go but kept the crew. I think he let one of the stewardesses off. 
And once they got back in the air, he opened up his bundle of money and decided he didn't like his folding cash in Benjamin's, so they made him land back at Dulles and demanded <laughs> larger denominations, which you could also do a lot easier back then. They only print up to hundreds now. So the plan from there was to fly down to his native country of Honduras, and then he was going to jump out, but the plane had some hydraulic issues, so they swapped planes in New Orleans and then started out over the Gulf of Mexico. And then at 4 a.m. the next morning, he told him to lower the rear ramp, and out he went into the Honduran jungle, and he survived. Staying on the lam for another month before deciding that lifestyle wasn't his cup of tea, eventually turning himself in at the U.S. Embassy on June 2nd. And that was one year after D.B. Cooper did his thing. D.B. Cooper, I think, was 71. And from what I was reading, there was apparently a lot of people that were doing that back then, and I had no idea about this guy until I was looking at this airport. So that's a fascinating little story. All right, I'm gonna trim down just a hair because I wanna try to stay around 1,500 feet. Up here to our left, you can probably see this big ballpark. That's a minor league field called Coca-Cola Park, home of the Iron Pigs. And they opened that place in 2008. And the pigs are affiliates of the Phillies. And the park looks good. You know, I didn't come from the other side, so I don't know if you can see the stuff that's on the scoreboard and whatever they have out here, but I bet you probably can because the park looks great. Really good, look at that thing. We may get one hard freeze up here. I hadn't had any until my last flight, which I wound up aborting because it was like 10 seconds long, but if it does it again, we'll just assume it's going to keep doing it, and we'll just push through it. Look at that park. That looks great. Some more bridges up here. There's a little railroad bridge right here that looks like it doesn't go to any tracks anymore. Also an old iron truss bridge. Looks cool. So downtown Allentown is up next. First settled by new Americans in 1751 and incorporated in 1867. Named after a former mayor of Philadelphia named William Allen who bought up a bunch of land out here in 1735. And apparently he had quite a few dis you Look at this thing, look at these churches down there. I didn't notice those before either. And another big one there. Didn't get along very well with the Penn family of Pennsylvania fame. But this area saw little action during the earliest phases of the American Revolution. It later gained some notoriety as the place where the Liberty Bell was hidden from British troops after they took Philadelphia. And at the time, it was just known as the State House Bell, which is where it was hanging before they took it down. And the only reason they brought it, along with ten other bells, was so that the Brits wouldn't melt it down into ammunition. I guess they hit them all in a bunch of basements of churches out here. Alright, we're going to come this way a little bit. And we're going to check out the big fairgrounds. Which are going to be right up here to our left. There they are. So they were fairgrounds from before World War I, but during World War I, the military took it over and renamed it Camp Crane. This is it right here. And they were using it to train ambulance drivers heading out to the Western Front in France, and also some they said they were sending over to Italy. And they reverted it back to a fairground in 1919. Look at how great this looks. This is a nice looking city. It looks really, really good. No complaints here. All right, this is where that hard freeze was. Let's see if we can make it. This big field up here is called Crumb Stadium, used by three local high schools, and it's the largest high school football stadium in the Mid-Atlantic region. They built it in 48, but renovated it in 2002. And today they say it can hold 15,000 spectators. Right up next is going to be this region out here, which is the location of Cedar Crest College, a private all-female school that started life as Lehigh Female Academy in 1867. I didn't know they still had any all-female schools, but maybe I'm just ignorant to that kind of thing. All right, you guys ready for something incredible? Here's where that massive theme park is up here. And I never knew this thing existed, despite it being here in various forms since 1884. Today it's owned by Six Flags and it's called Dorney Park and Wild Water Kingdom, boasting 64 rides, including eight roller coasters and a water park with 19 rides. And one of those coasters, the Steel Force, is the second longest steel roller coaster on the East Coast. And that place is big, look at that. It's gonna pop a little bit as we're coming around, so I'll look back over the wing and it'll look a lot clearer, but some of the stuff here is gonna pop a little bit. It's a little bit more filled in than it is in real life. So the water park I think is over here. And then here's where all the roller coasters and everything are. Hey, look at that place. 
No clue that was out here. I wonder how many theme parks either named Six Flags or are owned by Six Flags in the U.S. We've seen a lot of them on this channel. We need to get our man, the White Arcade, to do that one up. He's the one that did up that one up by Burbank that looked incredible. And the one up by Dayton, in between Cincinnati and Dayton, also looked amazing. All right, it's going to look better from behind the wing because it'll be done doing it while it's popping. So that's not bad for a touched-up theme park. It really isn't. I mean, you can see most of the stuff. doesn't look too blocky. I mean, you can tell what it is. That's not bad at all. That looks hollow. Oh, no, it doesn't. That's one of those drop rides, I think. And there's the water park over there. And as if the amusement park wasn't surprising enough, I also didn't realize that Mack Trucks is based in Allentown. Actually, they were in Brooklyn for their first five years, but they moved out here and built their first truck in 1905. The headquarters remained in Allentown for over 100 years before relocating to Greensboro, North Carolina in 2009. But they still have a huge manufacturing facility out here that we'll see in just a bit on the outskirts of town. There's also a big Mac museum that's tucked right in the crook of two of the runways at the place we're coming into, so we won't really be able to see everything as we're coming in, but I'll show that to you on the satellite map when we're done. But even though they moved their headquarters, Mac is still the fourth largest employer in the valley as of this year. The company got to start when brothers Jack, Gus, and Bill Mack started messing around with steam and electric-powered cars back up there in Brooklyn in the 1890s. And in 1900, they started building buses for a sightseeing company up in the city, which was apparently lucrative enough to attract another brother, with Joey getting in on the action at that time. And for a very short while after moving out here in 1905, they pumped out a few rail cars and locomotives before realizing that heavy trucks was their sweet spot. In 1910, they started slapping the family name on their products, which apparently was all the fifth brother Charlie needed to see before he joined the party. And this is their other big place where they're making trucks now. The brothers all eventually bowed out, or more accurately, got bought out, with one of them dying in a car crash in 1924. And over the next 100 years, Mac has pumped out what I can only guess are millions of vehicles all over the world. Just in the fourth quarter of last year, they banged out 65,000 trucks, so the total figure has got to be way up there. All right, I'm reminding myself to get out. All right, so that's the big Mack truck plant now, where they're pumping them out. We're going to take another look at the other side, where we can see some of the trucks out there. Ooh, look at that thing. I wonder what that is. Didn't notice that before. Another great reason to get in the drone view. Okay, there's a neat little spot up here that unfortunately doesn't look as good in the sim as it does in real life. But there's a cool story behind it, so I'll show you where it is and then we'll take a better look at the end. It's the ruins of the Lock Ridge Furnace Complex, which was a big iron processing facility originally built out here in 1868 and burned anthracite coal, which is what they used for fuel before they switched to coke. But as bigger and more efficient furnaces started popping up in the area, this place struggled to keep up eventually closing down in 1921, and it claims to be the last anthracite furnace that was operating in the U.S. Alright, so this is it right here. And it's a lot more open in real life, but we'll take a look at the end. So they've got one main building that I think they rebuilt because everything else around it kind of collapsed, but they still have the wall standing. And they eventually turned it into a big park. Can we see any of the foundations down there? Not really. There's more trees in the sim than there are in real life. But that's where the restored part of it is. All right, we're going to fly out just a little further because I want to check out this ski slope, which you can just see off to the left side of our nose up there. Because after the disappointment of not seeing any chairlifts on that one up by the Finger Lakes, I want to see if we have any better luck out here. So this place is called Bear Creek Mountain Resort, opened in 67 as Doe Mountain, which is probably far too misogynistic for the locals. And it's not big at all. The top of the mountain only goes up to 1,100 feet, and I think the total rise is like 500 feet. But they supposedly have 21 slopes out here and 7 lifts, so we'll see what's up with all that. Let's come around this side of it. We'll take a look out of the right, because we've got to come back around this way. And I might try to see what that big thing sticking up over there was. Oh, no, I've lost it. We'll see if we can find it coming back around. I think I may have driven through Allentown the first time I was driving up to Buffalo to go move out there in 1999. 
but I didn't think much about it at the time because I wasn't doing things like this, and I was a young idiot and probably just thinking about all the fun I was going to have in Buffalo, which turned out I had zero fun in Buffalo. Except going to Letchworth State Park, which I told you all about in that Finger Lakes flight. Oh yeah, look at that. You can already see the chairlifts. Look at this. Man, they got them all over the place on this thing. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Thank you, Mamu Designs. That, by the way, is the chairlift pack that I got that puts chairlifts and gondolas, that's supposed to anyway, over any place in the world that's supposed to have them. And there may have been some on that Finger Lakes flight. We were just 4,000 feet away, at least. Look at that. Boy, you can see every single one of them. Look at that. <laughs> that is cool. Yep, that's about my speed right there. Nothing too steep. All right, let's come back around this way. Start heading back towards the airport. So I don't know about you guys, but every time I hear the name Allentown, only one thing comes to my mind. What do you think that is? Yeah, it's that Billy Joel song. And since we're out here, I figured we'd enjoy a little music trivia because for me, songs always sound better when I know the story behind them. Even ones that are already great like that one. And I got all this information from songfacts.com, by the way, which you should definitely visit and bookmark if you're a music fan. It'll tell you all of the known information about every song that's out there, as long as it's a semi-popular song, and even the ones that aren't really semi-popular. But definitely a cool site, songfacts.com. And in the extremely unlikely event that you've never heard the song Allentown, I'll just assume you're under the age of 30 or have never owned a radio, in which case I'll include a link for the official video in the video description for this flight. Let's see what all we have out here. It looks like a substation right there. I'm just skimming the horizon for whatever that big thing was that was sticking up in the air. I don't see it now. We've lost it in the trees. Well, that doesn't look great, does it? It's a little bit geometric and blocky. But that's alright. We're really kind of heading out on the fringes now. So Billy's not from this area, Billy Joel. He grew up on Long Island, and he was originally working on a song with a similar vibe called Levitt Town, which is where he was actually from, Long Island. But apparently he didn't like the way that was coming together. So he kept it on the shelf for a while until he made a trip out here and thought the area reminded him a lot of Levitt Town, Bethlehem in particular. So he was going to rewrite the song using Bethlehem instead of Levitt Town, but then it occurred to him that he was a drinking, smoking, albeit somewhat unattractive stud, hanging out with the likes of Christy Brinkley. And he didn't want anyone to get the impression that he was transitioning to Christian music, so he swapped Bethlehem out for Allentown, which was... Practically the same place, but far enough away from the evangelical crowd. And this is one of those tunes where if you've heard the song, you could probably guess it after the first couple of notes. Well, it turns out that first distinctive chord was a mistake. But Joel liked the way that it sounded, so he decided to roll with it. And now that's the way that baby starts. And he uses it throughout the whole song. Which is why you shouldn't do like the guy from Sesame Street does and smash your head on the keyboard when you make a mistake. Wound up working out great for Billy. And old Mr. Joel was from a generation before MTV and never really understood what the hype was all about, but apparently knew it was all part of the formula in the 80s, so when they shot the videos, he offered virtually no input, letting the directors do whatever they wanted. Later commenting on this particular video, Joel said that while recording it, he didn't notice how phenomenally gay it was, <laughs> with all kinds of oiled-up muscular men riding all over each other and showering together, and then if you watch the video, there's even a naked shot of a guy from the back. And I hadn't thought much of it either, but when I went back and watched it, after knowing that that's what Billy Joel thought about it, I think I understand what he was talking about. But it was the 80s. Well, it wasn't gay back then. And since that was recorded in the days back before digitized sound files existed for anything you might be looking for, the producers had a hard time finding the industrial sounds used in the background of that song. But fortunately, a huge steam shovel, like a legit old-school steam shovel, was working on a skyscraper near the studio, so they used a real steam whistle for that and didn't need to edit the sound for it because the reverb was modeled perfectly by all the big buildings around the construction site. And for that pile driver sound, they made that by miking up a big box of rented percussion instruments and then jumping up and down on it to the beat. <laughs> they said everything in there was completely destroyed by the time they finally got it just right. So they probably had to pay someone when they tried to turn that rental back in. So now that you know all that, and now that you know all about Allentown, click on that link and watch that video and tell me if that song didn't just get ten times better. Okay, so we're on the home stretch now, heading into Queen City Municipal Airport, and even this place has a pretty cool history. 
During World War II, the U.S. Navy took over one of the Mack plants out here to build the Seawolf torpedo bomber, but they needed a way to get them from the factory to wherever they were being deployed, so they built this place, the airport, in 1943, and then a highway linking it to the production facility. And Mack wasn't thrilled about the idea because they were already making tons of trucks for the Army, but the Navy said probably something to the effect of, I'm sorry, I thought you actually wanted to win the war. So Mack acquiesced, and they started building the planes. And like most wartime workforces here at home, most of the folks putting those things together were women. Though you might mistakenly believe they were all extremely fit and hairless men based on that music video. All right, there's the airport right there in front of us. See it up there? We'll go ahead and throw our slats back out. The irony of that whole operation is that by the time they managed to bang out 180 of the Sea Wolves, the Navy had transitioned to the Avenger as the primary torpedo bomber, so none of those they made out here ever flew any combat operations. And then after the war, the city kind of struggled to find a use for the place since they already had the big one up on the northern side of town where Mr. Hahnman took his $303,000 in his cigarettes. So they used it for a couple of different things for a while, some training for civilian patrols and things like that. And they even opened it up to local drag racers in the 1950s, trying to get them off the city streets. But nowadays it's used for all kinds of aviation events and private GA flights, and in 2006 it was named the General Aviation Airport of the Year by the FAA. Alright, our approach speed is like 60 knots, and I think this thing stalls under 40, so we're going to get pretty slow as we come over the fence. So this was really a surprising area for me. I knew it had a pretty deep history and heavy industry, but I had no idea how much other cool stuff was out here. And obviously it looks cool in the sim. So I hope you guys are going to check this out on your own. All right, we're getting blown around a little bit here. We got a five knot headwind, which is just fine. So if you want to see it just like we did, again, the flight plan will be linked in the video description along with the bookmark file for a little nav map. So when you open it up, when we look at it at the end, you'll see all the little purple bookmarks in there for all the stuff that we we're looking at, which will make it a little bit easier for you to spot them if you want to track your flight in real time and little nav map if that's how you're going to do it you can download that in there too and i also have a very very short tutorial of how to do that also in our how-to section potential upcoming flights i probably need to try to get a lunch break in these last few flights have been pretty long and required a lot of research so i might take a little shorty somewhere and someone just told me that clifford designs the guy that did the manila bay flight just pumped out another one so we may go check that out he did such a good job up there and I still want to get up to Tokyo. We haven't been to Australia in a while. Been back there. I got a bunch of city packs for that area. Orbix made a ton of them. Maybe get back down to South America. I love that area. And if you have not yet signed up for our Discord community, the link for that will also be in the video description. Very cool place to hang out. Check it out. Upcoming flights are posted in there. Additional details about past flights. And just all kinds of cool general aviation talk. That's not GA, just general slash uh, general hyphen maybe. We talk about planes in there. All right, I gotta get real slow for this. The last time I tried to land this, even going what I thought was below stall speed, I was hopping all over the place, so let's just get real slow. I'm gonna get down under 60. Oh, we got some power lines there I gotta watch out for. So there's the Mac Museum right there, that place off to the left. And there's a big track going all the way around it. Boy, this thing is slippery for a biplane. Man, it's not slowing down at all. That's all right. We'll figure it out. We got a long runway here. All right, I got the throttle off. So I'm just going to try to burn that airspeed off. Burn it, burn it, burn it. Keep that nose up. We're at 40 now. That wasn't too bad. A little bit of hopping. Oh, oh. Stay with me, stay with me. And they said you're really not supposed to use the brakes. I don't even know if it has brakes in real life, so we'll let it roll for a while until we get up this taxiway and give it some back pressure on that stick to keep that tail planted. And bring up our slats. Alright, so I guess we'll just pull right over there by those hangers, and then we'll check out little nav map real quick. Cool, cool place. Hope you guys will check it out if you haven't seen it already, and now that you know a lot about it. If you do nothing else after this flight, and now knowing what you know about the making of Billy Joel's video, Click on that link and watch that again. Really changes the feel. Alright. And boy, he uh, when I was watching a live performance of him, live from Long Island it was called, and it looked like it was old enough that it was filmed in the 80s. And he had an ashtray sitting on his piano with about seven unlit cigarettes in it, which I'm assuming he sucked down during that show. And he sounded great back then, but I watched another more recent 
live performance. And you can tell that smoking has definitely taken a toll on him. He does not sound like the old Billy Joel anymore. I'm sure he's probably quit smoking by now. Probably vaping his head off. That and all the stress of that breakup with Christy Brinkley. All right, hopefully we have a taxi way up here. I think we do. So there's the Mac Museum. Yep, you can tell we're getting a little stuttering by here. And I don't know, I don't think this is a touched up airport, but we're close to the ground and this is photogrammetry, so... That's what we gotta deal with. Boy, it sounds a lot better from the outside than it does on the inside. It sounds great on the outside. Well... <laughs> do we have a turnoff up here? I'm probably on one of the runways. Yeah, I am on the runway. Okay, that's bad. I'm just going to pull across the grass. Obviously, this thing can do just fine on the grass. Maybe I should have left that little skid on the back. Oh, there's the turnoff right there. Oh, whatever. All right, we'll just stop right here. We don't want to get any trouble. We haven't gotten a gate assignment from the tower. Okay, we'll throw the chocks back out. Parking brake on, which means chocks out. And let's see, let's just cut the mixture. That'll do it. All right, so let's see what all we got to see on this trip. Take the centering off. All right, so there's that strip, and you can see that's where the sim put it. And if I got rid of this, which I can't do because we took off from that, you would see that this is grassy. Like, this might be part of this guy's lawn or something, but that's not the runway. We could see those two markers on the end of that, so I think this is supposed to be the runway. I don't know why they put it over there, and then there was all those trees, so... If you're in a plane like this, you could get up, obviously, but I think this is supposed to be the correct runway if you want to fly this, just like we did and try a different landing or a takeoff field. All right, so here's the Delaware River, which looks fantastic. And here's where it connects to the Lehigh right up here. And while we're on this, this is where we could not see that canal, but some of it's kind of filled in now, but the canal ran all the way along the side of this here. And you can see it does open back up into a canal up here. And I think they do little like boat tours and stuff on it for whatever part of it's still open. And this was southeast and over here, which is just north of Brown Town. That's probably pronounced Brownton. Nobody would call something Brown Town. And then there's that dam. And if we get close enough, oh, they don't even say it on the Google map. It says the chain dam, but that's it. So I don't know where the chain was. And this thing over here, as you can see, is the chain bridge. And someone said that back in the day, like a long time ago, they used to have some kind of amusement park or something, maybe even like the late 1800s, early 1900s out here. I think that was reading that correctly, but they were calling this island something different. But it is Island Park, so I don't know what they had out there. But there's where the little bridge was. I don't know if there's still a bridge there or not. I can't see anything there, but looking at the pictures on the ground, there may be. Doesn't matter. You won't be able to see it from the air. Okay, so then we came around here, and there's that huge field, and there's the conference center for St. Luke's. And there's the hospital itself. Then we came over this way, saw our landfill. So again, in the sim, over here was where all the dirt was, and then this part was grassed over, but it looks like that's where they're throwing the trash now. They got a little bit of trash up there. And then we came on to, look at this. See, in the sim, all these had huge buildings on them now. So they got a Crayola place, distribution place, Walmart, of course, more Walmart. Nike's got one going in there. I think Google said that QVC had a big place down there. But here's where the old blast furnaces were. Yeah, steel stacks. That's what, that, that's what that's called. So they got a museum down there. They got this little performing arts place here and a hotel. And somewhere they're planning on putting a casino in, I think, if I was understanding that correctly. Here's all those great bridges were. And here's the one that I was pointing out, the hill to hill bridge. Built in 1924 to replace an old covered bridge. And then we came across downtown over here. Oh, sorry, we got to check out the Coca-Cola place. Well, that's interesting. This is all grass out here, and it doesn't look like the scoreboards were lit up, so maybe they're just blacking the sim, too, if we came across from the other direction. Came over downtown, and I wanted to tell you about the park they have down here, West Park. There was a little bit of interest. This was supposed to be a reservoir when they first kind of cleared that out. Never became one, and it just looked like a big square of trees, kind of like that in the sim. So they want to point that out because we had to talk about the fairgrounds. So this is the place that they were using to train ambulance drivers before World War I. And then here's, you know what? That was the wrong field I was pointing out. This is Crumb Field over here. And I think you can see the writings on the side of it. So this is the one that the high schools are using. I mistook it for this one over here. And I don't know what the deal is with that one. Because this must be, so this might be the college campus. No, this is the college campus down here. I don't know what this field goes to. Hmm. Oh, this is Mullenberg College. I didn't even see that in there. Okay, well, you'll see a couple fields out there. This one down here with the writing on it. And you can see the writing on it is the one that's used by the high schools. That's Crumb Stadium. So you got a little bonus look there. All right, we'll look at that when we come back in. So there's the college, and then here's the theme park. Look at this place. That looked really, really good for a default 
photogrammetry theme park. I've seen much worse than that. That looked really cool. So this must be the Steel Force here. Boy, that sucker is long. Yeah, it is. Look at that. That is gigantic. Second longest on the East Coast. And I think it's the eighth lar longest in the world. So that's a pretty serious ride. Okay, came down here, and this is where Mac is building their trucks nowadays. And we forgot to look and see if they have... Oh, those are all just trailers there. I don't see any actual trucks out here. Unless that's what these things are. Oh, yeah, here they are. They're all over here. 65,000. They didn't build 65,000 in the last quarter of last year at this place. That was their global production. But that is a lot. And then here's the furnace. So all we could see in the sim was this here. But you can see all the other ruins around here like this. On the outskirts of it. it all you could see really in the sim was that. And it really didn't even look like that. But that's where that was. The Lockridge furnace. And there's a big cloud. And then here's how they're blowing a little snow on this thing now. But this is Bear Creek. Look at that place. That looked good in the sim. Looked really good. And we came around here and I told you about old Billy Joel and making his song Allentown. And a couple other little spots that we were just going over too fast. There is a, you might be able to see this. They got something out here that's probably an old Indian mound because this is the Museum of Indian Culture out here. And I bet you can probably see that in the sim. And I don't know if this is part of it here too or not. Probably. Looks like it. So I bet there's some cool history about that, but there's no way we would have had time to look at that and talk about it while I was trying to come in. And there's one of the covered bridges there. And then here is one of the other little ones I was mentioning before. And then there's the Mack Truck Museum. It says testing now, but the Google map, it just says it's the museum. But they obviously do have a big test track there, so maybe they're still doing some testing there. And then we came on in. That's it. That's Allentown. Be sure to watch the Billy Joel video now that you've taken this flight. Let me know if that song just got better for you down in the comments or shoot me a message on Discord. If you're not a member of Discord, check it out. Had an absolute blast. Boy, did I learn a lot out here. Man, I thought this was just some little podunk backwater, which maybe it is, but it's growing now. This place got voted, if I didn't mention it before, uh, in 2014, I think, the fifth best place in the country to retire. So leading up to the early 2000s, this place was just a dive. It was really, really in bad shape. And the state and local government started pouring a lot of money into it. And in 2014, fifth best place in the country to retire, according to U.S. News and World Report. So probably worth taking a trip out here to check it out. Had an absolute blast. Cannot wait to see you all again in the skies. Later.